Welcome back. In the first few videos, we talked about the initiating device circuit of a conventional fire alarm panel. We talked about how the wiring is supervised by this end line resistor. We talked about what happens if the circuit opens and no current can flow, so the panel doesn't see that resistor and it goes into trouble. We talked about how a short circuit on that, on that circuit is what causes an alarm. The panel interprets that as an alarm. So I redrew a fire alarm panel here, a conventional one with three zones and one output, which we'll talk about in a second. And this zone has two devices on it. Let's say it's a pull station and a heat detector. The other two zones are bypassed. So since we know that all the zone wants to see is a, is a resistor, the way you bypass the zone is just put a resistor on that terminal. And it doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know if there's 100 pull stations on a zone or if there's just an end of line resistor. So we have, a, we have a good idea now about how initiating device circuits work. How, how do the notification appliance circuits work? That's what these outputs are called. NAC, NAC1 right here, that stands for notification appliance circuit. So it's kind of interesting. If, if we just put 24 volts connected positive to positive and negative to negative, just like we do on the, on the initiating device circuits, we're going to have 24 volts sitting at this horn, which is going to turn the horn on. Or maybe it's a horn strobe. Either way, it's going to turn that device on. When that device has 24 volts, it is activated. So the way they, but the, but the circuit still has to be supervised. You know, you, you can't just have zero volts on here because then you'd never know if somebody cut a wire. So the NAC still needs to see an line resistor. And the way they do this is kind of cool. Internally in this, um, in the horn strobe is what's called a diode. And I'll try to draw one by hand real quick. Uh, let's see, I need a color. The symbol for a diode goes kind of like, like this. You got a. There's two sides to it. There's an anode, and a cathode. That's not something you really have to know, but it doesn't hurt. Yeah, it's good enough. So, what a diode does is it only allows current to flow in one direction, and it blocks it from the other direction. So. Let's say I had a little power source right here. Let's say I had negative and positive. When they invented the symbol for this, I think people used to think that current flowed from positive to negative. Well, we now know it actually doesn't. And you could study why it has to do with there being free electrons that are attracted to the positive side of it. And so current actually flows negative to positive. The reason that that's kind of confusing here is because right now, if this were connected like this, say this is a battery, current would be allowed to flow in this direction. It goes through the cathode, out the anode. If current were the other way, so let's say this is, now we say this is negative and this is positive, now it would be blocked. So think of it like a check valve in your house. I don't know if you, if you understand plumbing at all or not, but if you have a basement and you have a sump pump in your basement, let's say you have a pipe that goes up and out of your house and you have a pump down here. I don't know how to draw a pump. Let's say this is your, your sump pump. There's a little motor in here, whatever. So you have, a, you have to pump this water up and out because this is ground level of your house. So you need to pump that water out. When the pump's on, there's a little valve in here that, let's see, how can I draw this? There's a little, like a door essentially. It's a little gate that would allow water to flow this way because it can push on it but when it tries to push this way that gate closes and it pushes down and there's a little like you know say there's a little ledge here it can't get past that way but there's a hinge that lets it go up the diode works basically the same way it'll let voltage travel you know from negative to positive but not if the polarity is reversed it's going to block it and it's going to be an open circuit it's just like this check valve it's not going to let the water come back down it'll only let it go one way so internally in all of these horn strobes there's a diode and let's see how I have to draw this. I'm going to draw it, well, it's internal and you don't even really see it, but, but let's, uh, I'll draw it like, like, I'll just draw it like this. Uh, it's kind of, it doesn't look too good. Anyway, so when we go and complete the circuit, if we go positive to positive and negative to negative, what's actually happening if you were to meter this right now on most panels, some pan there's like, there's one brand of panel that I could think of that doesn't work this way. This would actually be negative, even though it's labeled positive and po positive to positive. That's 
the, the polarities are shown in an activated state. So in a normal condition, the panel is going to have, the polarity is going to be reversed on this. Even though it says positive and negative, if you were to put your meter on voltage on these two terminals, you would read a negative, let's say 24 volts. Most modern panels actually jump that down to a, a smaller voltage, but um, for our purposes, let's just say that that's a negative 24 volts right now. And then it's going to go out to the underlying resistor. So then we're going to have a resistor right here. So this would be a negative 24 volts, and it's set up such that, so since this is negative, it can't go through this, this diode, right? The, internally, you know, you don't see the diode, it's internal on the thing, but this current, this is, even though it says positive right now, there's actually negative, it's, the, the voltage is actually negative, so it's blocked. It can't go through the actual horn strobe, it only goes to the terminals and through this resistor and back. It can't pass through, you know, this internal circuitry that we don't even see, because it's tied to that and then tied to tied to, you know, whatever, internally on this, on the horn stroke. So I hope I'm not confusing you too much, but basically we'd have a negative, we'd have a negative voltage in, an, in a standby state. When this panel goes into alarm, so once one of these shorts, let's cross this out. I'm going to short this pull station. Now the panel detects an alarm. This little red alarm light would come on. This is my way of showing that the light's lit. It's not very good. And now the polarity is going to reverse on this. So now the, the one that the, the, the leg that says positive is actually going to be positive. The leg that says negative is actually going to be negative. And now since the current's flowing this way, this diode will pass through, you know, and it'll actually pass the current through on into this horn strobe. And now the horn strobe will come on. So I hope that makes sense. We're going to go, we're going to go over a diode a little bit more here just to, I drew this, which I think is a pretty good picture of explaining how it works. So this is a symbol for a battery right here. Again, we have the cathode and we have the anode. The cathode, when connected to the negative side of the circuit, will pass the voltage through. See this light bulb's on. If we were to switch these and this, we made this negative and this positive, it's going to block it going this way. So when the cathode's connected to the negative side, it allows, power, it allows the current to flow. Um, and that's not something that you're going to deal with a whole lot. You just have to understand that that's how these horn strobes work. Um, you know, you, you walk up to a panel, and I think I'm going to do a video with an actual panel on a wall and show you this. You could, I could, I could have a meter right on the terminals, and you'll see it's negative voltage. You put a panel on the alarm, it flips, it flips the positive. And again, the reason for that is we need to be able to supervise this circuit. We need to make sure that this wire is intact through the inline resistor without turning it on. If we had just a steady 24 volts on this horn strobe the whole time, this horn would always be sounding, which obviously isn't going to work. So I know this drawing is pretty sloppy, and I apologize for that, but that's where we're going to stop this video. See you in the next video.